Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this week's tip of the week is going to be maintenance on our Weber plate compactors. This, uh, we have our CR6 here, but all the plate compactors have a very similar maintenance routine. And uh, the manuals that come with all the machines goes over this in detail, so it'll help you follow along. Not every maintenance step we're going to be going over is going to have to happen every single time you do maintenance. They are going to happen at different times depending on what they are. You can check the link in the video and we will include a, uh, a link to the maintenance overview and how often you should perform each of these things. And then every machine also comes with it in the operating manual, comes with a chart telling you how often you should perform each of these steps. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start off by changing the oil and the exciter. It's a nine mil. Allen key in here, and ours was jammed with dirt, so we had to clean it out to get to it. But now it should be pretty good. And the machine has to be tilted down a little bit. This little six millimeter bolt, uh, Weaver recommends changing this bolt every time you do the oil because of the way it seals, and it also corrodes really bad. We're gonna begin uh, refilling the exciter using full synthetic 75W90 gear oil. And again, this is in the manual, and the manual specifies using 0.75 of a liter, or 750 milliliters. To empty the machine, we had tilted it forward because this is the drain hole, but this is also the fill hole, so we've tilted it back now to add our gear fluid. I used some 4x4s. Just be careful when you're doing this that it doesn't fall back on you. We're going to begin filling now. Nice and slow, just make sure you don't spill any, and it does take a little bit of time as it is pretty slow to go back into the machine. All we have to do now is put our drain plug back in. As I said before, it works best to get a new one. We unfortunately do not have one at this time, so we are gonna put our old one back in, but as soon as our new one comes in, we're gonna swap it. The next step is changing the air filter, which you'll find under this flap. I'm gonna open this up, and I'm actually gonna tuck these in um, to these grooves behind it to keep it out of the way for now. You unscrew this nut on top. You're not going to need any tools for this and it's basically the same for every small machine. Uh, unscrew that, then you unscrew this next wing nut right here. Once you get that wing nut off, your filter will just pop right off and slide it up. This is your air filter. Uh, what Weber recommends is pulling off this outside cover and blowing that off. And if there is tear, uh, any tears, you will need to replace it, but usually you can just blow it off. So we took our exterior filter outside and blew that off. We're just going to pop that back on because it's still in good condition. Once it's on, we're just going to replace everything. And that's all our air filter maintenance. Next, we're gonna be draining the engine oil. Now, this is a very similar process on all small machines, except the fact that this has a plate right here. So you're gonna be using this tube. Now, this comes with all the machines, and it is in the manual. And you just screw this on, and then you use this to drain the engine oil. That's our engine oil drain plug right here. Now when you unscrew this, it's not going to leak any oil until I screw this on because it has a valve in it. So we're going to remove this, take our cover out, and then we put in our tube, and no oil is coming out. And then we're going to take our bucket, put it underneath our tube, and take our cap off. And now you can see the oil becomes, starts to come out. Now that we've finished draining all of our engine oil, all we have to do is refill it. We're gonna be using 10W40 motor oil. Again, you can find this information in your manual. We have put the plug back on the end of our line. Now we're gonna unscrew it and replace our cap. Just be careful, even though no more oil will come out of the motor, there still is oil in the line. So when you unscrew it, try and keep the threaded end up to avoid spilling oil and replace our cap. 
The last step is going to be refilling the engine oil, which we're going to do right here. Pull this out. Uh, this is our dipstick where we're going to check our level, but it's also where you fill the engine oil. We found that it helps to tip the machine back a little bit. Take your funnel, place it in there, and begin pouring. The manual calls for 1.1 liters, and uh, one quart, which is what these come in, is about 0.95 of a liter. So we're going to use one full quart and a little bit more. Every time we're doing maintenance on a machine, it's always a good habit to check the spark plugs. On this machine, you'll find it on the front. Go in here, you pull off the spark plug wire. Just pop that off. And then you're gonna wanna unscrew your spark plug. For this, I'm gonna be using 21 mil socket with an extension and a ratchet. It's a good idea to use a spark plug socket. I unfortunately don't have one, so I'm gonna be extremely careful. Nice and gentle. And then I broke it loose. Take my ratchet off and just do it by hand so it's more gentle. This is a newer machine. It doesn't have very many hours, so the spark plug is in decent condition. But if yours is not, it's a good idea to replace it. And in the very least, clean it up before you put it back in. The next step we're gonna be tackling is checking our belt. And that belt is located under this plate and this plate. To start, we're gonna pull off this one. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket. This is just a dust cover, and we're just gonna set that aside for now. Right here, you can see our belt. This is what we're gonna be checking. Uh, this is the clutch, and we don't touch this pulley. It has a spring inside it, and we don't wanna mess with it. So to get the belt off, we have to open up this pulley on the bottom. We found that holding the machine up by the top helps align the bolt holes with the bolts and makes it easier to access and easier to remove this plate. If you have the ability to do that, we recommend doing it. There is a second plate under here that is accessed through these two bolt holes. So we'll remove that as well. And they do use different bolts, so just make sure you keep them separate. Now we'll remove this plate through the top. And as we see what we do now. On this particular plate, these holes in the plate are threaded as well. So it does take a little fiddling to get this out. Once you remove this plate, we are gonna disassemble this pulley. So it takes, it has three Allen key head screws and it is a six mil Allen key, which I'll grab right now. Now that we remove those, our pulley is gonna come apart, take this side off, and then we can remove our belt. Now that we removed our belt, we're just gonna inspect it for any tears, any cracks, anything. And we also wanna just inspect our pulleys while we have this dust cover off. And we take a look at it. Although this is a Honda engine, these belts are specific to the Weber, Weber machines. So you can't find these at a hardware store. So make sure you order these from Weber if you're getting a replacement. As stated before, this is a very, a relatively new machine, pretty low hours. This belt is still in good condition. So we're gonna reuse it. If your belt is not, make sure you order a new one and use the new one when you assemble. Hope this helps you with your Weber maintenance. Uh, make sure to check out our Facebook, our YouTube, and our Instagram account. And we also have a website at pavetool.com. Thanks for watching and see you next week.